Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part five of my 3D printed R2D2 project, which is in fact going to be a nice orange and white R6 droid. So I've got quite a way with the frame already, which is entirely 3D printed, and some of the mechanics to drive the center foot and the shoulder mechanism. So let's have a closer look. Here's my frame. As I said, all these parts are 3D printed. They're mostly 10 mil thick sections, which are two five mil layers bonded back to back and these rings for instance are printed in eight separate sections so we've got these shoulders here and these are motorized with a belt drive and some motors tucked away in there which you can just about see so have a look at the last part for more information on that and also have this other drive mechanism which is this motor driving a drive belt which is driving a piece of studding that goes right down through the middle and that drives this carriage on 3d printed rollers which roll up and down rails, and that is to retract and um, extend the centre foot so it can convert for two, from two leg mode to three leg mode. So the aim of this droid is that it's going to be uh, basically how you see it now. It's going to have the features like the vents and so on, but the idea is not to have proper skins on it and just to leave it open as a mechanical 3D printed demo piece so you can see it converting and you can see the mechanics and electronics inside. So the next thing we need to do is build the legs in a similar style, which are again going to be 3D printed. And the actual leg is um, about 650 millimeters long, um, so just over two feet plus the foot. So I wasn't quite sure if these belt drives would be up to driving the shoulders to convert from two to three legs. So we should be able to find out once we've got the legs and feet and the wheels on. So let's have a look at some CAD for the legs. So here is the CAD that I've done for the basic leg structure and as you can see that's built up in lots of layers. I've coloured them uh, differently so we can see them and I've also got some recesses on the side where these gold parts are which um, just give that a bit of a smooth surface. Overall we want it to look like it's 3D printed so I'm not too bothered about the rest of the layers showing on the side of the legs. There are some other pieces to go on this including the booster cover which is typically blue on R2-D2 and the um, horseshoe piece that goes on top of the shoulder there and the hub and some other details down the bottom by the ankle. So um, I, I've made these hollow largely so that I can get my parallel rods to run down which go from those fixed pieces of studding to hold the feet parallel with the body um, which is required so that it can stand up in two leg mode and I've made sure I've left holes in the bottom there for that studding to pass out and go into separate bearings on the feet. So um, most of this is hollow, we can then um, hide some of these pieces and if we just take those layers away we can see that we've um, got these hollow channels down there. The green piece also overhangs slightly, so we can hide that and you can see the rest of this is much more open, which means that those extra layers don't really need too much extra 3D printing. The purple layer there is the base layer, which is solid. And the rest are far more minimalist. Um, I've also cut holes in the back of this thing so that we can um, save some plastic and I can also run the wires out which travel down the legs to the motor controllers and batteries in the feet. So I'm not sure if this is going to be, um, how rigid it's going to be or whether it's going to twist. So I need to be careful. Um, there are obviously other pieces I can put in for reinforcement. There's a lot of cross bracing that could be fitted into that. And I'm thinking about making the booster cover to be um, actually recessed into this channel. So it will be um, actually have sides that go down inside those layers. And I want that thing to be um, more of a frame-like structure rather than being one big solid piece so that we can see inside the leg. And it's the same style as the rest of the um, rest of the body. So it looks like a, a kind of open frame or a droid that hasn't been finished yet. We also have those details to fix on the booster cover and the horseshoe. So I think I'll do that in the same way so those details are more look like they're floating inside um, a frame. So we've got this curious purple piece off to one side. Um, that's actually a modifier mesh, which I will talk about shortly. I've broken down all the layers and laid them out so they can be printed flat on the bed one at a time. And I've also cut up some of the bigger parts. So the purple part on the left, you can see I've cut up into three pieces. The others I've cut up into quarters, so they all fit on the print bed. So this modifier mesh part, is actually going to be an overlapping part. So what we want to do is print all of these as with the others in 30% infill. But where the leg bolts onto the shoulder, I want to make that part solid. So what we're actually going to do is overlap the extra purple piece onto the main piece and give that different slicer settings. 
So this is Slicer, which is the software we use to process a 3D model and generate the G-code that actually drives the printer. That's got all of the settings for the printer, including the infill density, how many solid perimeters and how many solid layers we have before infill, if we have support material, and also all of the printer parameters. So I've got my piece on the bed here, this grid on the left represents the print bed and I put in my main piece which was that purple piece. If we go to settings we can bring in various other parts so we can load other parts into this and make different settings for them including printing with multiple extruders. What I'm actually going to do is load a modifier mesh which we can just about see there is um, in the middle, it's hard to see because they actually overlap, but that's the smaller hub piece. And, and what we're going to do is define different settings. So for my main piece, I've got 30% rectilinear defined as the infill, and the other one I can make um, different settings. So I can say actually that I want to use 100% um, and I could do that in another type of infill. I'm going to use rectilinear, which is really um, the best for 100% solid. So we just check those, we've got 30 there and 100 there. So that should print the middle part, which is currently highlighted in green in 100% and the rest of it in 30%. And I have to make sure I go to my default infill and set that to zero, otherwise that will override everything. Um, and then we'll export our G-code and we'll put that in the printer and we'll see how it works. I've actually got both printers working away making these parts. As you can see here, hopefully, We've got the TAS4 producing the first one, this is doing 30% in most of it and it's blocking the middle in solid so that is working. The other TAS3 is doing the opposite of that part for the other leg. Getting quite away with printing these parts out so I'm doing them in sets, um, both legs at the same time, layer by layer, so I've got another one of these downstairs. So I'm going to be building up these layers and then putting those back to back with another layer and doing all the surrounds so I can try and get them as flat as possible. Then I'll be bonding that onto the big back plate. So I've got several more layers to print. I've got my acetone. Have a look in the previous videos for acetone welding. Basically it's ABS, which we can make a chemical weld to fit all the parts together. I've installed these pegs in here, which are just three mil bits of steel and I've just pushed them into the um, layer here. And I've obviously put these holes into the CAD so that I can line these up properly and get all of the pieces to be straight um, and I'm also clamping it down to the desk as I'm acetone welding it so that we can get these layers perfectly flat before we bond them onto the big back plate so all of these should align properly and I can build them up so that's 25mm thick which is the five 5mm five layers for the main part of the leg so it's quite a long time later I've got most of these layers built up I've just got the ones that the anchor lens which make it slightly wider and I now need to stick those pieces onto the big flat panels so basically I'm going to push these pins back through the other way so that I can stick these on the back like so and then I can stick those extra layers each side of that so we're just going to take something made of metal going to push that pin back hopefully the other way that was going to work Let's try this there we go so my pin sticks out the bottom and I can put that hopefully it should align to the holes that I've left in this sheet there it is all together, the pins aligned properly of course, and now I'm just waiting for that to set up so I can get my clamps back to do the other one. So I've got both legs built and I've attached them. There's actually a mounting here which is there's four screws that go into the hub piece which are not screwed on and there's a three bits of studding which keep this straight with the hub on the inside that's motorised and they're only bolted on with those three bits of studding at the moment. So um, the legs themselves are fairly wobbly at the moment mainly because you can see the gap around the edge there so I may well acetone weld those on as well although they're not too bad on themselves there's a bit of flex but we have plenty more parts to build I started building up the thing here where the wedge goes and there's also the booster cover to go down there which is going to have pieces um, running um, with the grain the other way and lots of cross bracing so that should make that leg really rigid and we've got both legs installed there so now we've got the opportunity to go and test to see if the motors that I put in let's just move that around so we can see one if those motors with their belt drive are strong enough to move these legs to push the droid along uh, right at the bottom. Um, we haven't got a sense of foot yet, so we're gonna have to come up with an innovative test.
So I've got my droid on a skateboard here and I fixed the legs on with the three bits of studding and we're just going to do a test to see if it can push its weight forward. Obviously I've got no centre foot yet but we need to test those um, shoulder motors. So I've got these big heavy weights which I've got behind each foot. We're just going to run the motors and check that that can um, push itself forward on the skateboard basically. So. Seems okay, and that was a belt skipping on the end stop. So we'll just um, put these in front now and do it the other way. And hopefully it will push itself back. Seems to pretty much work anyway, so I think those motors are going to be strong enough, even if I need to do that thing with uh, tensioning the belts up a little bit more or using some other sort of cord um, but it seems to uh, push itself backwards and forwards okay so I'm pretty sure those shoulders are okay. So you may have noticed on the way back um, doing that test in fact one of the weights wasn't actually in front of the foot so it's only using one foot to push itself back or one shoulder so I'm pretty confident that the motors are actually strong enough to do it even if the belts are a bit dodgy. As I mentioned in the last part we could just use some cord which is um, you know, obviously the motor only turns around once, this only does a tenth of one turn at 36 degrees. So the, um, as the belts are coupled here, we could couple the, some cord onto the actual pulleys of the motors, as long as there's enough space for it to turn around once. Um, but we're going to leave that um, as it is for now. The actual middle hubs here, um, those are locked onto an end stop right now. They're incredibly rigid. Um, the, the, the thing we might have noticed in the test is they looked a bit wobbly and a bit rubbish and um, basically this is because there's quite a lot of play between the inner and the outer hubs so we can um, actually turn that one quite a lot and especially with the leverage of the legs um, you can see the outer turning but the inner stays still so uh, when, when it's standing in two leg mode it's probably going to fall over um, or at least teeter forward quite a lot. Um, and the main reason for this is the three bits of studding. So there's three bits of studding that tie these together, which is six mil studding, which hopefully you can just see in each side there. Um, in fact, we'll do this, there we go. So those three bits down the middle, um, but in fact, those are twisting um, and all of them are twisting as they're together uh, between the inner and the outer, which is why there's quite a bit of play there. Um, and unfortunately, there's no easy way to fix that now. So really I need to go back and redesign that shoulder hub so there's something rigid like a piece of 3D printed plastic, basically a tube or a cylinder connecting the inner and the outer so they can't move independently. Um, um, the bits of studying I really didn't think through. So um, it's not easy to rectify, although there is a dirty fix I can do to try and lock those two together, which is what I'm going to have to do really to make it stable. and. Uh, basically make sure it looks a bit more rock solid. Um, the other end stop when it's in three leg mode is the same and since the, the feet are actually pushing it along it means the feet are going to get pushed together as the drive motors kick in so I do really need to fix this um, either for driving or standing in two leg mode. So as I explained at the beginning I'm quite fortunate in that I've decided not to put skins on my droid and the reason for that is so you can see the centre foot going in and out and you can see all the nice electronics. And I see several of these droids being built and they've got really nice blue anodized aluminium frames and things and then the person covers them up with skins and you can't tell whether the droid's made of steel and aluminium and took 10 years to build or whether it's you know, made of styrene and cardboard, they all look the same. So the aim was to have it open as a 3D printing and mechanical demo piece. So fortunately that gives me some extra places where I can put a bridge in between the inner and the outer hubs. So what's probably going to happen is I'm going to make a piece that sticks on the inside of the leg just here, on that inside surface, um, and bridges through the body and then couples onto this centre hub. So it's going to be quite a big nasty piece. Um, obviously if you had uh, skins on your droid the side vents are supposed to be there so you wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I can only really do it because I'm keeping the frame open. The piece is always going to be hidden behind the leg and I just need to make sure it can still turn 36 degrees so it has to come down quite low and then come and be um, attached to the inside of that hub which I can acetone weld on and if I make sure that part's sturdy enough it will keep these two, um, two hubs absolutely aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and put the four screws in to hold this onto the hub and then I'm going to try and get these perfectly aligned straight and then we'll try and design that piece to fit in there. So ideally I'd go back and redesign the shoulder hub but I can't because the holder for this is acetone welded in now um, and there's only space for those three bits of studding to go through. 
I don't, all the five pieces, including the ones that say stationary. Ideally, I just needed uh, maybe, a, maybe a slot shape to go through that I could put a square piece in that the studding went through or something like that. But it's actually too late for a redesign now because this is all one big piece of plastic. So much as I hate having to do this to it, um, here's the piece. So the gold pieces there are the existing um, the pulley and the hub and obviously the ground plane represents the back of the leg so we've got this piece here in blue which is going to be made in three pieces so it can be printed separately and then screwed and acetone welded together and screwed and acetone welded to the existing hub so um, it's going to be this way up um, and that is going to obviously bridge the two of them so this ground plane part will be welded to the back of the leg and then it's attached to the hub with this horseshoe looking thing. So um, we'll get that printed and then I guess we'll get them stuck on and see how much firmer that makes it. So here are both printed parts. I feel still quite bad about having to put these in. Um, they are going to help bolster the leg up in more ways than one though, so um, maybe it's not a bad thing and hopefully I can conceal them with at least a partial side event. But we'll get these stuck in and then we'll have a look and see how it looks. I fitted those parts under each um, leg there, which you can see, which I'm really unhappy about having had to do, but um, that's really the only way to salvage it. And I've also started the orange booster covers there, which of course um, are pieces printed this way and stuck in right into those grooves. So again, these are gonna be an open frame for that, so you can see the um, parallel rods inside and all the things moving as it converts so it's going to be built in a very similar open frame style to the body and they're orange because it's going to be an orange R6 droid so altogether that leg is a lot more rigid now that's really well locked between the inner and the outer um, I really wish I'd used these screw holes I deliberately put into the frame to hold the shoulder hub piece um, so then I could have unscrewed it and redesigned it and I should point out also that in fact the uh, problem isn't a 3D printing problem It's actually metal that's twisting If I'd used the 3D printed coupler through that shoulder hub the um, issue wouldn't be there ironically So uh, despite wanting to use metal to make it tougher that didn't work out very well So I feel quite bad about my design um, and that's why I haven't published the CAD files in advance Because I don't want people to build along with me and then find there's a massive issue so um, I'd probably like to return to that and do a proper design sometime. But for now, that's much more rigid. It's going to be really happy standing up. So let's just balance that on its legs and see how it looks. So there it is standing on its two legs. Obviously, um, it's far less wobbly now. It's really happy either way. The legs um, don't bow or bend, and they're much more stable this way. There is a little bit of wobble, but, um, you know, obviously it's going to have its centre foot when it's driving as well. So um, pretty good with that. There's also more reinforcement, of course, to go inside these booster covers that go this way to stop the leg twisting um, and various other bits and pieces. We've got the um, shoulder horseshoe piece to go on there, another ankle wedge and other bits and pieces. So those legs are going to end up much stronger than they are now. So pretty happy the rigidity. Um, when it's in standing mode, you can't necessarily see these bits so well. What I'll probably do is make a custom panel that comes around here and has this contour cut out so that, um, you know, it covers it. And obviously this droid's never going to have skin, so um, there's going to be other details. So there's going to be electronics and things in the panels you can see. So um, hopefully it's a bit like my own interpretation of the prop. So, you know, I'm not really happy about these, but I can make them into a feature. So there we go. Let's put that into three leg mode and see how that looks. That's pretty much the right angle, so obviously I don't have a centre foot yet, so it's propped up on some boxes. But um, looking at it from sort of standing height, you can't really see those wedges. From the back you can probably see them. If you kind of duck underneath and have a look. So they're kind of disguised by the rest of the white plastic in a way. So um, the legs of course are more than strong enough, because they're on an end stop again at that position. So altogether, I guess it's okay. That's all I've got for this episode. Next time I'm going to work my way down doing the centre leg and thinking about the drive mechanism for the feet and hopefully starting to plan those. Once we've got the feet and the centre foot on, then um, effectively we can try and drive around. So we can talk about the radio control system, some of the control electronics and think about the head. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates on this project and lots of other projects. 
Check out my social media pages in the link in the description to this video.